Welcome to the JHM Mechanical Adjuster Repair Kit video. The purpose of this video is to show you our new product and also to give you common symptoms and installation instructions. Our kit is available in three different ways. It's available as a single unit, sprocket replacement piece with two O-rings, or as a pair where you get two sprockets, four O-rings, and it's also available with a lot of the popular kits we already sell. I'm now going to show you how it works, the common issues with it, and why we decided to make this kit. So here is a bad sprocket. See it's pretty wallowed out. Right down here. What happens when it wallows out is you will get usually a poor idle, cam codes, misfires at idle and other items, but once that's wallowed out and that pin, here's the pin, no longer stays in here at idle and low RPM, then you will get idle issues, misfires, cam codes. So this is not a big deal if it wallows out because it can't stick in, so the pin just sits down here instead of in the hole. I'll show you more of the component as we do the installation, but basically this gets wallowed out by the pin. So we made our unit with a little bit harder metal, and it's all CNC machined here in the USA. This part is about 750 retail. This part you can get a pair for under that. So why repair it versus replace it? Well, for one, cost, you're going to spend about half as much. For two, 99% of the time, these components, other than this, are not wearing out. We have a hardened pin, we have a nice water jetted out wiper system that the oil pushes on to clock it. This component, the outer case, is not wearing out. And then this is just a cap. So there's not a lot going on other than the pin and the sprocket itself. There is a spring that holds pressure on the pin to help set it before oil pressure kicks in and there's a little uh, race for the spring that allows oil pressure to get in. But the bulk of what holds the pin, is, pin in is oil pressure so they will go pretty far and they'll be slightly walled out and actually work pretty well for a while. Another symptom you'll see is the uh, actual car will clack really loud like almost like a, a rod knock and that's on cars sometimes where it's more than just the guides the pin is actually slipping in and out until the car has enough oil pressure to hold it in. So that's another issue as well. Now let's move on to the tools required and the actual installation of the kit. Okay, let's move on to the tools and parts needed to do this installation. We need a hammer. It doesn't really matter which size because you're not going to hit it too hard, so if you have a bigger one, you're going to have to hit a soft. We need a socket. Uh, this is a 22 millimeter short socket. Um, it's just to help support it when you're popping it apart because you don't want to hit it with a hammer or chisel it or ruin it. A T30 socket and a ratchet. This ratchet's a little short, but you get the point. And then a small little screwdriver to get the O-rings out or a pick. Also, you're going to want a torque wrench when you're all done to torque it, which is not shown here. Um, also, it's really easy sometimes if you're just using a little cordless impact get the bolts off so you don't have to hold it or try to put a vise on it and possibly mar it. So the first step is to disassemble the original unit. I like the cordless impact because I can just hold it, get it in there all the way. And I got a really ugly and dirty unit just to show that it doesn't seem to matter. All the ones we've already been doing for the last year or so hasn't mattered. So this you can just crack them all loose. You don't want to fully loosen them. And the reason I have this chain here is for those who may not have, you know, either even a regular impact, because when you're loosening it up, it doesn't matter if you use an overkill tool. So I've got a piece of chain here for those who may want to try to do it by hand. Maybe you don't have a vise or you're worried about marring it up in a vise. You can actually use the chain as a way to grab the sprocket and do it by hand. So you get a little more work, but I basically treated the chain like a wrench. So now once the screws are all loose, got one more here, we'll proceed to popping it apart. So yeah, so now they're all loose, next step will be to pop it apart. Now we're ready to break the, break the O-ring seal of the part. So what I have here is I have all the screws, you know, loosened by a few millimeter from the T30, all five of them. And here I got a 22 millimeter socket. You just need a socket that's going to drop down like that. 
So you don't want, like I said, you don't want to use a hammer or chisel and mar this up and cause it to stick or not work correctly after you're done with it. So I just put a socket right here. The table's a little loud here. And you just keep walking it around until it breaks the seal. So now that I've broken the seal, I can loosen the screws the rest of the way. Once the screws are all the way out, let's see here. I think we're just catching on the ground. There it goes. You can just flip it over. And you can see the O-ring even sticks a little bit on it. This is the O-ring, one of the O-rings we're going to replace. The screws can all be put aside. Now this is, if you want to do the easy installation on this, um, at this point we can just stick the JHM unit on. You know, make sure the pin's going up and down. It's not marred up. This one's actually in mediocre shape. It's not super wallowed out, but it's showing age. So yeah, at this point, if you do it on a clean surface, obviously I'm not using the best example by using wood here or having, you know, lint from rags, but we wanted a nice white background and I wanted to be able to do this in a nice quiet place. So generally you want to do this on a metal surface, clean of everything. But if you just open it up, sometimes they're going to be full of oil still. The quickest, easiest way to deal with it is it's still together. The center wiper's in here. If this is lifted up, the center wiper right here, the spring and the little plastic race I showed you earlier could pop free. And that's when you want to pop the back side off and reseal that and make sure that's in place. I'll show you that near the end here. But basically all you do at that point, once it's popped open, is you want to put your wiper in the center or off to one side. Because if it, if it drops in the hole right away, then you're not going to be able to test it and see how it feels. So realistically, you want to put it closest to this pin right here. This pin is going to line up with that hole. So you're offset and you make sure you know nothing's jamming up, but it's already oiled up. I wouldn't put sticky grease in it or anything like that. Then you want to grab an uh, O-ring at that point. And then usually all I do is I just put a little bit of grease on it. You don't want tons of grease everywhere, just enough to walk it on there. And the whole point of the grease is you want it to stick to the JHM part so it can't slip out, get crooked, not seal, and then cause an, basically an internal oil leak and the, the part not to work. So now that the seal's in here, it's sticky when you got gloves on. Okay, seal's in, it's in the groove. You wanna make sure it stays. And then you just line up that pin with that hole and look inside and you will get it. There you go. So now it's all lined up. It's flush. What you want to do is you want to slowly peek along this seam and make sure it looks flush and there's no o-ring sticking out protruding in or out. And then you should be able to, if you can see, just holding on my fingers together, you can rotate this a little bit. If you go all the way, you're going to set the pin. You don't want to set the pin yet until you tighten it up because you want to feel it. So now we can just flip it over, keeping it together. For the purpose of the video, I'm just going to run these in real quick. I would highly recommend you tighten this by hand. Like I kind of kiss them a little bit here. I recommend you tighten them by hand and then torque them to eight foot pounds using the chain. But for the purpose of the video, I'm just going to get them snug here. This is probably more than enough. Like I said, I recommend the torque to 8 foot pounds. Just doing this to get this done for the video here. Okay, so now it's together. So now you'll find like with a screwdriver or something like that, you can rotate it. It's only going to go one way if you have the pin fully set. So that's obviously the end of it. And now I set the pin. It rotated. And this one, if you look, there should be a little bit of play in it. You should be able to move a little bit in the pinhole. This is exactly how it is OEM. Sometimes they'll be a little tight and they may not want to move as much. But this one's fully assembled. This one's ready to go. There is one last check I'm going to show you at the end of the video on how to air check it. So if you're one of those people a little nervous, want to make sure it's 100% right, just like if you're rebuilding a trans an automatic transmission or something like that, I'm going to show you an air check. But 
Now to slid in the pin, it's stuck in there, and you can hear it moving. It sh you should hear that. Like I said, some are tighter than others. We've, we've done all kinds of different installations with these, and it's worked as long as it passes the air check, which I'm going to show you that in a minute. I'm also going to show you how it looks fully disassembled and why I recommend just popping the lid, pop another lid on it, you know, keep all dirt, debris, and obviously wood away from it. Do it on a metal surface is ideal, but this one's ready to go other than being torqued. So if you decide to completely disassemble the unit, which would entail getting this rear cover off the back, which would be seen here, this from the years of use, these O-rings tend to seat pretty well. Unfortunately, the only way to really get this off, I mean, you, once it's flipped over and taken apart, you usually can try to grab this with a, you know, a real soft vise, don't vise too hard, and hit it down on this flat. You gotta be careful not to mar it up because all these surfaces gotta be smooth. You'll also notice on this part, you can see where the this little spring and the spring pocket ride on this piece. There's the spring. There's a spring pocket right here. You can see just the wear marks. Not too bad. Some will show more wear than others, but as long as the spring and the pocket are all in place, they're fine. You reuse them, no big deal. We, we haven't had an issue yet. Um, the only concern we would have is if maybe you've been running around with a messed up adjuster for who knows how long and maybe it ate itself up, but that's like neglecting anything else. So, so far we've been able to rebuild every one we came across. We do have cores in case of that rear pinch. So basically, okay, so we took this all the way apart. We got the wiper, we got the lid, we got everything here. So how I would assemble this, if, you want, if you're one of those people who are really picky, you're like, you know what, I want to completely take it apart, I want to clean it, you know, so on and so forth, which is fine. Um, like I said, we've been fine just slap, swapping the lid out, barring there's no metal pieces in there and there's nothing crazy going on. Um, it, this is not an issue, but if you happen to pop it apart all the way or you just one of those people who want to make it clean You here you do is you just take the JHM part put the o-ring in it like I did previously and Then you can see where the pin goes here and then the hole here You're gonna face this shoulder piece down Should be a nice tight fit and along the way you're probably just going to cover this cover this with a little bit of motor oil You don't want to use grease you want it to everything to not stick on the initial startup so you just kind of stick it in between where the hole is, you can see the pin. You can just drop the pin in. The hardened pin goes in the hole. And it's not going to fully seat. And we drop the spring in. This is the fun part. We're going to put this outer cage on. Then the fun part's getting this on. So we'll do the outer cage next. The outer cage, if you look, there's no o ring here. There's the, the pin that's going to go into the JHM component, line up with that hole. So this will be going down. One thing you want to do before though, if you took it apart this far, and that's why we supply the extra O-ring, is get this booger out of here, the original O-ring. There it is. Like I said, those things sealed nice, so we generally don't like bothering with it unless there's something suspect or just, you know, like I said, some people just want everything spick and span. Okay, so there's the alignment pin, the hole. We line up a bunch of things here and everything's a precise fit. Do that. Fine, there it is. There's the hole. Double check the O-ring seated like I did before. Everything's down. Like I said, you probably want to just lightly coat everything with a little bit of motor oil just to keep everything smooth. But this one I didn't and it's been apart for a while for, during the R&D process. So this one still moves freely. Everything moves freely. You know, make sure everything moves around. Then the next step is you're going to have to install a O-ring. And once again, like I said, you just want to stick a little bit of grease on it, walk it around, and then that'll just drop on this half. And then now for the fun part I just mentioned. So the O-ring goes in there. You got this little spring seat. It has two sides to it. We got a, a round side. Oh, let's see if we can get this up there. We got a round side like that. It's just a round hole in it. And then we have a slotted side. The slotted side is going to face up because that's how it allows oil to get to the back of it when it's trying to shoot it in there at lower RPM. And then there's an actual pocket. It needs to drop on the pocket, get centered up. So this is the tricky part. This thing's floating up here. Probably doesn't matter how you clock it, but I like to go where you can see where it used to rub. I put it on there. Just kind of lay it over the holes there and then you gotta get make sure it's in there that one's seated and then you want to clock it with the this the bolt holes and there we go stick these in 
But that's if you're fully disassembling it. Like I said, generally speaking, you should be able to just slam another end on it and be done. Once again, I'm just going to speed this thing up. I would recommend working up to 8 foot pounds, 10 newton meters, which is standard for a 10 millimeter by 1.0 volt. We have not had to use Loctite on these yet, and we haven't had an issue. We've been running these for quite some time already. And then there it is. Like I said, you can grab a screwdriver or a pick, and then sometimes they're tighter than others. And sometimes when you fully disassemble it, it gets slightly tight. So what you want to do, if it's a little tight, kind of move it around. Hopefully everything gets neutraled. And snug it. And at that point, like I said, there's some that are tighter than others, even though OEMs we've seen that. So boom, see how I just quickly just made sure everything was neutral again, and it dropped right into the pin. So that's it. I mean, other than just if you make sure that thing quickly goes into the pin, and when it's in the pin, it goes like this, you're fine. But like I said, I'm still going to show you the uh, air check, so that way you can be 100,000% sure, because at this point, it moves, it dropped in the pin, this should be good to go. air checking what you're gonna see is a notch inside of here right there you see the notch so just to the right of the notch there's a hole I have my finger on the back of it got to get a good seal so just to the right of the notch you're also gonna want to go ahead since it's set in the pin you're gonna want to push it all the way down so the pins not catching the edge then you're going to apply air pressure, ideally with a rubber attachment like this. And then see, boom, it completely releases. So once it's released, that just means you know that if it works with air, it'll work with oil pressure. So then you just grab it and drop it until the pin clicks. So if you click the pin in and you release it like that, these are 100% good to go. So that's your nice check to guarantee it, give you that peace of mind. You don't have to pull your motor again good to check even new ones or used ones this way as well. You can do this three, four times, how many times you think. And this is where, you know, you might have one that's a little tight. You may not get this little click noise where you could still get it to air check and you could still push it. It's just a little tight. We've ran those in the car, no problem. But generally speaking, if you get a neutral when you assemble it, it should be fine. But ultimately, if it air checks, it's good. You're good to go. Thank you for watching.